Hello friends, this is one of my presentations at UP State Ophthalmic Conference held on 12th of December 2021 and this is part of the series of role of topical anesthesia in ophthalmology and the topic which I was handling was manual small incision cataract surgery under topical anesthesia. The myths and facts. So here we go. So what do I mean? Now what I mean is that the topical anesthesia is presently considered that it is exclusively used for clear corneal phacomusification and manual small incision cataract surgery is performed under local anesthesia. But uh, a study which we had done in 2009 we had proven that manual small incision cataract surgery can be done safely and most importantly painlessly under topical anesthesia. So what is the need to do this? Now we should know that this is topical anesthesia is one of the most patient friendly anesthesia and there is no fear of injection near the eye which all of us would be dreaded of and there is no pain due to injection and there is a shorter stay in pre-operative room where local anesthesia is delivered and there is immediate post-operative visual gain because optic nerve and ocular movements are maintained. There is no hematoma formation especially in patients on anticoagulants and this is as painless as phacomulsification under topical anesthesia which again we have proven by a study done in 2010. So continuing with the issue of why should we switch to topical anesthesia, it is safer. Now it is known that there may be a possibility of a respiratory arrest or conversions because of local injection when it infiltrates through the optic nerve into the brain space. There is no chance of globe injury or increase in IOP which has been seen and reported as a globe rupture after peribulbar anesthesia and there is no chance of optic nerve injury. Now all these issues are related to the needle anesthesia because the needle which is used to deliver the anesthesia in a space which is approached by a blind approach so it is possible to injure the structures around that particular site. One more reason why it should be the choice is there is no pad, there is no bandage and the cataract surgery is done without such disabilities which are usually considered part of the game and a phaco surgeon knows that this adds to the glamour of the phaco mulsification surgery and here I have a picture which says that the patch may look good on some individuals but most of our patients will not good, look good with the, with the patch and there is a glamour associated with a situation where no patch is given and the visual recovery is quick and excellent. So how do we switch to that? Now the most important fact is that we should remove the mind block and rest of the things are all which you will learn over the period of time when you are doing this. And how should we approach that? Now, what I recommend is that use lignocaine two percent jelly in place of drops. A lignocaine jelly being a viscous fluid which will remain more in contact with the ocular surface for a longer time, and hence the anesthesia is deeper. More so, it eliminates the need for frequent irrigation of the corneal surface because of the nature of the jelly. And this also helps in irritating the surface less. There should be minimal of surface handling. Use intracaminal lignocaine, which I recommend as 1% lignocaine made out of 2% xylocard injection, which is preservative free. Avoid bipolar cautery, which causes some sensation in spite of the anesthesia, which topical anesthesia is not able to overcome. Avoid IOP fluctuations 
Rise in IOP during the procedure may cause pain sensation because of stretching of the uveal tissue. And subconjunctival injections which are routinely being given should be avoided because firstly there is no need for them because when the eye is not patched, the normal routine post-operative medications can be started immediately after the surgery and they can be continued just as any other day. So let's go ahead and see this video which I have mentioned as why manually small incision cataract surgery should be done a topical anesthesia reason number 11. Now this is a case in which a routine phacomossification was planned and I can as you can see there is a clear corneal incision being given and we can also appreciate the pupil is nicely dilated but the cataract is very very hard and big. It's a brown cataract which is known to have a large size, a leathery consistency and also that the capsule is very fragile and these patients also may have weak zonules which contribute to creating complications in these situations if phacomulsification is attempted. Now during the surgery and the capsulorexis procedure, once I did the hydrodissection, I realized that the zonules and the capsular bag stability is not good. So I had to pause and take a relook at the situation and have a plan B. So the plan B was that I was switched to manual small skin cataract surgery under topical anesthesia. So we didn't go for any additional anesthesia and this didn't cause any inconvenience to the patient and we converted that clear corneal incision into a frown incision incorporating the clear corneal incision into the same manually small incision so that there is no need for extra incision. Minded that this surgery is being conducted under topical anesthesia. Enlarging the incision so as to deliver this large nucleus, it was important to relax the capsular excess margin so that the nucleus can be delivered out of the bag without disturbing the zonules. And as we can see while at the moment of rotating this nucleus, it's a large one. Now I prefer to use this fish hook because it doesn't incorporate any fluctuations in IOP in contrast to the irrigating vectors. As you can see, it's a large nucleus. It's brown in color. And there is the IOL which was planned, successfully implanted in the bag. But not all these days are as good and we still had a complication in spite of all those precautions and there's a gush of these bubbles which you can see again in slow motion and along with that there was some fluctuation in the anterior chamber and we can see that this portion of the zone uh, this portion we can see there's a loss of posterior capsule and there's a prolapse of vitreous which was successfully retrieved and excised using a wick technique and we can see the the PC rent has gone back into its position and this finishes off my talk and the emphasis that manually small incision cataract surgery and the topical anesthesia is a definite possibility and it can save the day also. Thank you.